My name is Kudirat Mutomori Olato Kumbo Kekere Ekun. I was born on the 7th of May 1958 in London, UK, to the family of Alaji Senator H.A.B. Fasenro of Irelu Square, Isaleko, Lagos, and Mrs. Winifred Laiwala Ogundimu, Ne Savage of Oluobo area, Lagos, both of Lagos Central Senatorial District. I'm happy to say that my father was once in this hallowed chamber. and Corona School Ikoyi. From where I moved to Queen's College Yaba for my secondary education, I obtained my uh, ordinary level school certificate in 1974 and my higher school certificate in 1976. University of Lagos in 1977 and I graduated in 1980. Thereafter, I proceeded to the Nigerian Law School and I was called to the Nigerian Bar on the 10th of July, 1981. After my call, I proceeded for the one-year compulsory national youth service. I served in the old Bendel State, now Edo State, and I served as a state counsel in the Ministry of Justice Legal Drafting Department. After my youth service, I proceeded to the London School of Economics and Political Science, where I obtained a master's degree in law. Thereafter, I, I obtained the master's degree in 1983. And from that time, I was in private legal practice until 1989, when I joined the lower bench as a magistrate grade two. I rose to the position of chief magistrate grade two, and from there was appointed a judge of the High Court of Legal State on the 19th of July, 1996. Shortly after my appointment as a High Court Judge Firearms Tribunals. I chaired that tribunal from 1996 until 1999 when those tribunals were abolished. At the same time, I was also carrying out my regular duties as a judge of the High Court. I had several ad hoc assignments during that time. Two of them that are quite uh, worthy of mention is I was a member of the committee that drafted the Lagos State High Court Civil Procedure Rules in 2004. Those rules brought in a lot of reform in civil procedure. They introduced new concepts such as front loading where you file all the documents you intend to rely on along with your originating process as long as witness statements on oath so that it will cut down the time spent on trial by starting immediately with cross-examination. We also introduced ref compulsory reference to ADR. And those rules became the model for all the states of the Federation. Another innovation while I was in the High Court was I was a member of the steering committee of the Lagos State Multidore Courthouse. That is the first court-connected ADR center in Africa. That model has also been adopted across the Federation to reduce dockets and speed uh, trials. Um, from the High Court, I was elevated to the Court of Appeal in September 2004. While at the Court of Appeal, I served in various divisions. I served in Kaduna, Port Harcourt, Ibadan, Makodi, and Akure divisions. I was the first presiding justice in the Makodi division of the Court of Appeal. I set up that division of the Court of Appeal. I also served on the Information Technology Committee of the Court of Appeal. By the grace of God, on the 8th of July, 2013, I was appointed a justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I was the fifth female to be appointed to such a position. In the course of my career as a judicial officer, I have always strived 
to maintain my integrity, to uphold the rule of law, to ensure that I do justice in all the matters that come before me. Some of these positions that I have mentioned, I believe, have also shown my leadership qualities. Presently, I am the, I, I am the um, vice, the chairman now of the National Judicial Council, but I had served as the vice chairman of the National Judicial Council and also the chairman of the interview committee. I'm also on the board of governors of the National Judicial Institute and chairman of the education committee. I also serve on the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee. I was also, I'm also a member of a subcommittee of the Body of Benchers that looked into conflicting judgments, the challenge of conflicting judgments. Um, I am also, I have also received many awards for my work, my dedication. Um, I've been honored three times by the Lagos State Judiciary, I've been honored by the Women Lawyers Forum and so many others. Uh, by the grace of God, I was conferred with the national honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic in October 2022. I am a life bencher. I am a fellow of the National Judicial Institute, a fellow of the National a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies and also a fellow of the Dispute Resolution Institute, International Dispute Resolution. Um, these are my credentials and I stand before you today with a pledge to do my best to uphold the integrity of the judiciary, to uphold the rule of law, to ensure that we defend the constitution and to work for the service and interest of all Nigerians. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, you have heard from the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is here before you. And uh, I just want to uh, employ her to take her seat while she's uh, jotting down the questions. So you, you, you may decide to take two questions at a time, right. or three questions, but you will sit down and judge down the, the questions. We don't want you to stand trapped. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. The acting CGN for being nominated by Mr. President to serve, and the NGC, sorry, to serve as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Well, you are here for screening, and I think the best aspect of determining the suitability of every nominee by these chambers, number one is the practical performance of such a nominee. For you, we've known you over the years, we've known your exploits in the judiciary of this nation, we've been following you. You are known to us, uh, and you've done very, very well, and you are still doing very well. That said, the CV you brought here is loaded with your excellent performance, exploits in the judiciary. That's not in doubt. Well loaded. It shows you have a wonderful pedigree in line with her your practical performance. This we all know. So to me, you are highly suitable for this position. This is my personal opinion, and I'm sure most of my colleagues here share the same opinion with me. That said, I will want to ask you a question, because I want you to bring your sound pedigree to bear. Uh, in your office when confirmed as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. We know that having you know, integrity in our judiciary, uh, 
uh, is something that is important. Sai Kwan known for the sustenance of our democracy. Now, what would you do when confirmed as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria to ensure that you uphold or we all uphold or you uphold the integrity of our judiciary? Nigeria wants to hear because we know you have a wonderful pedigree. You were demonstrated down over the years in doing well in all assignments given to you. We've seen that over the years. So how will you bring that to bear in ensuring that uh, we have uh, integrity in the performance of our judiciary? Thank you, Mr. President. Are you doubting the integrity of the judiciary? No. <laughs> uh, we want the best. No, it, it, uh, it's important because... I want us I want her to tell Nigeria. Are you having doubts? Well, I'm not saying. Uh, in Hausa, there's okay. an adage. Women can be done. If it is good, we want it to be enhanced. Okay. okay. Mr. Chairman. Sitting as chairman, my name is Senator Mohammed Tahir Monguno. I represent Bornu Not, an immediate first chairman of the Judiciary Committee before my elevation to be the chief whip of the Senate. Uh, Acting Chief Judge, or Chief Justice of Nigeria, congratulations for your nomination and possible confirmation by the Senate. I adopt all the enconiums put on you based on the resume that you have submitted by the immediate first speaker, this distinguished deputy senate president as mine and wish to add, ask a question to the effect that the independence of the judiciary is sine qua non for the achievement of an egalitarian and just society. Once the independence of the judiciary is compromised or threatened, then it is an invitation to chaos and anarchy. So the, independent, the judiciary should not only be seen to be independent, but should be seen manifestly to be independent. If by the wisdom of the Senate, if confirmed, what steps are you going to take to ensure the independence of the judiciary so that our quest to achieve a just and egalitarian society will be achieved and will not be a mirage? Then the other one, is the stagnation of cases in the Supreme Court. And as such, there are various schools of thoughts to the effect that there is a need to restrict the number of cases that goes to the Supreme Court in order to plea the Supreme Court from the backlog of stagnation of cases that goes to the Supreme Court. Then the other alternative is to enlarge the number of justices in the Supreme Court so that cases will be dispensed quickly. Because in, in, in consonance with the adage that justice delayed is justice uh, denied. Then the other issue is in view of the controversy and the heat generated with regard to contestation for power 
that normally ends in our court instead of the people deciding it. It's like now it is the court that decide who governs as opposed to the people. So as a serious contestation for power and it is take, the battle is taken to the courts. And as a result of that, in order to insulate the judiciary from the vagaries and vicissitudes of this political influence and what have you, there is a school of thought to the effect that there is need to create a constitutional court that will be vested with the jurisdiction to determine election election related matters. So I want your opinion on this. Why do you stand? Why do you stand as a renowned jurist that has attained your present position? Why do you stand on these issues that I raise? Thank you. The, uh, the thing, uh, I wanted you to ask a question, but you ended up asking questions. Because if I understand you very well, you were more or less on judicial independence. What will she do as Chief Justice of Nigeria to sustain judicial independence or enhance judicial independence? But you also went further to add a political tone that it is judiciary that now determines who rules. I don't think the judiciary determines, I think the people still determine. But when people carry, my place we have a saying that if uh, somebody carries a basin of death into the market, anybody who has death will throw it in. Is it not we that carry our things to judiciary? We fail to resolve issues at the ballot and then we run to them. So they have to take the decision as to which of you is fit to be there or not. It's a, so are you asking her whether she's going to stop us from going to them? Because, because they, they, they don't uh, initiate cases. We are the ones who initiate cases, so we should advise the political class to settle most of their cases out of court. Am I right? So let me ask the chairman of the Senate Committee on Judiciary and Legal Matters a senior advocate of Nigeria to ask a question. Let me start by congratulating you on your nomination. My question is very simple and it's taken from a part of your introductory remark where you spoke about uh, conflicting judgments of court. My question therefore is, what is your view about this menace? Not only in terms of courts of coordinate jurisdiction, but also within the same court. And what, how do you intend to uh, tackle this problem? Thank you very much. Okay, ma'am. <clears throat> the Deputy Senate President, Senator Barrow, you asked about how the integrity of the judiciary will be sustained under my leadership. I think the first thing in Given my CV, I said one of the things that I'm known for is integrity. I'm also known for being strict on discipline. And therefore, in order to ensure that the integrity of the, of the judiciary is maintained, I will ensure that the code of conduct is fully complied with. I will ensure that there is zero tolerance for corruption. We have a committee of the NJC that deals with performance evaluation. And what that does is they assess judgments delivered, they assess how uh, judges are performing their functions, and they have regular conferences. And what I know is that we are even making moves now to tighten that performance evaluation process so that we can, it's when they submit returns, for, when judges submit returns, for instance, it's not about quality, but quantity. It's also about how they carry out their responsibilities. Are they punctual? Are they upright? And things like that. Now, in the NJC also, we are going to ensure that petitions are dealt with 
speedily. This is another way to let the, the public know that the integrity of the judiciary will be upheld in all circumstances. Um, another area for upholding the integrity of the judiciary is that there is a need also to insulate the judiciary from external influence. We are very grateful to His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, and the National Assembly for passing the bill that increased salaries of judicial officers. We are very grateful. But there is still a way to go. Because when we are talking about the integrity of the judiciary, it involves not only the take-home pay, it also involves infrastructure that we are working with. What is available? Is it conducive? These are all things that have an effect on how the judiciary performs and what. So on that, in that regard, I will be pushing for still more better welfare for judicial officers so that they too can perform at their optimum best. Thank you. Uh, the Chief Whip, Senator Tahir Mongono, representing Bono North. Distinguished Senator, you have asked about the judiciary, the independence of the judiciary. And I know that there are a lot of complaints at the moment about the process of appointment of judicial officers. Uh, this is an area that I'm also going to take very, very seriously. The NJC also has a committee working on this to ensure that we make the screening process rigorous, transparent, and something that the citizenry will be satisfied with when judges are appointed. So I'm going to make sure that this is done and with dispatch. We are looking at other jurisdictions to see how they you know, carry out this process and how we can improve our own process in that regard. I know that once the, the, the citizens are comfortable with the manner in which judicial officers are appointed, it makes them have more confidence in the entire system. Um, I will also be um, encouraging or supporting improvement in our laws. So again, when it comes to the independence of the judiciary, all hands have to be on deck. And I look forward to working with not only the National Assembly, but also the executive to ensure that we have laws in place that enhance our independence. Um, <clears throat> Stagnation of cases in the Supreme Court, whether uh, the number of cases that go to the Supreme Court should be restricted. I am very firmly of the view that there needs to be a limit to the cases that get to the Supreme Court. One of the reasons for this is that the Supreme Court is a policy court. It's supposed to determine matters that have public policy significance, matters relating to the interpretation of the Constitution, or matters where very rare legal issues have come up, which require a pronouncement from the Supreme Court. As you know, the um, constitutional provision gives us 90 days to deliver a judgment from the date of final address. Those 90 days are spent dealing with matters of national significance, as well as matters that have no significance on the national stage. I am of the view that many matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal, especially inter interlocutory appeals. There's also a situation where pre-election matters come all the way to the Supreme Court, whereas in national and state assembly elections, the substantive elections terminate at the Court of Appeal. 
I think all pre-election matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal. So many matters need to terminate at the Court of Appeal so that the Supreme Court can really live up to its designation as a policy court. Thank you very much. Um, I don't believe enlarging the number of justices is the solution because the cases are so many. The backlog is tremendous. So even if you increase the number of justices, I believe that sometimes it gives the impression that, oh, there are more justices, so we can even file more appeals. It's more about the jurisdiction of the courts, which I think should be limited. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, the, His Excellency, the, the, president, the President of the Senate, has responded to the, the issue regarding elections. Uh -huh. All I would say is that we need to strengthen our institutions, strengthen our attitude to elections so that people have confidence in the system and will not be encouraged to go to court all the time. The chairman of the Senate Committee on the Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, um, you have raised the question about conflicting judgments. And we know that this is a very serious concern. Now we have what is known as the doctrine of stare decisis, where a lower court is expected to follow the decisions of a higher court where it is shown that a judicial officer deliberately fails to follow that doctrine, there, there will be strict consequences. Also, it is necessary because there are so many complaints about conflicting judgments that where these conflicting judgments occur, there will be, be a need to have committees that will look into them and see how the court can take a position. The proper procedure will, will take place. The court cannot sit on appeal over its own decisions. But where these matters arise, the court's attention will be brought to them and they'll be dealt with speedily. In the Supreme Court, for instance, where the, court is, the court's attention is drawn to any of such matters, those matters will be fixed expeditiously so that those issues can be resolved. We know that it is a serious problem. It is also an act of misconduct if a judicial officer fails to follow a uh, laid down precedent. So this is something that is going to be tackled s seriously. And yes, so in terms of the code of conduct, we will be dealing very decisively with matters where we find that this is happening. I also want to say that um, there are responsibilities for both the bar and the bench. So in this kind of situation, you also have legal practitioners who are aware of the existing precedent and they come and mislead the court. So as the head of the judiciary, I shall ensure that both the bar and the bench are up and doing in this regard. So that the legal, practi the, the, uh, legal practitioners disciplinary committee can also deal with those legal practitioners who are found to have deliberately misled the courts. Another reason why you have some of these conflicting decisions is from what I would call forum shopping. So this is another area that will be ta tackled very seriously and very decisively. Thank you very much. You are trying to say that, like in Abga, if, if somebody if somebody loses uh, in the Congress, in the Nambra State, the person can go to Casina and get a, an order that he's the chairman in order to remove Senator Ume. Is that not what they are? No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm giving an example of Abga. Of Abga. Yes, the, and then it will emerge from a uh, uh, a court in uh, in Casina, while the Congress, uh, while the matter concerns Abga in Anambra, so uh, that is forum shopping. Uh, uh, so I think that must be taken seriously, and I think also it may require uh, the intervention of the National Assembly so that some of these things uh, can be codified. If
if you notice, I'm trying to make sure that every zone has an opportunity to ask questions so that nobody will say, uh, my zone was left out. So, eh? my zone was marginalized because she's for the whole country. So I have um, captured Northwest, I've captured Northeast through Chief, uh, the Chief Whip. Uh, I have captured the, uh, so let me look at the Southeast, Senator Tuniway. My Chairman, I want to ask a very simple question to our distinguished guest who is present. Our dear guest, I read through your CV, different professional affiliations we are member, different institutions you attended from Queen's College Yaba to London School of Economics, University of Lagos and so on. Very impressed. But there are some two pertinent issues which I feel that I should ask you that if this Senate, 10 Senate of Federal Republic of Nigeria, if we confirm you, whether you are going to do a take a bold step more than what your predecessors in office have done. These two issues are issues of one, delay in administration of justice in Nigeria. Second issue is issue of inefficiency. The Senate president is a lawyer of notable not character. And you agree with me, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a medical doctor by training, that there are two major pillars of natural justice, or two elements. Number one, Nemo Judas and Kanzaswa, which is that you are not going to be a judge in your case. Second thing is audio train pattern, which is here the other side. Now, this Senate or National Assembly in 2015 enacted a law, 2015, Administration of Criminal Justice in Nigeria. But up to now, the issue of delay in the justice dispensation in Nigeria, as well as issue of inefficiency. These two major issues are a major problem of judiciary. If this Senate confirms you, what steps are you going to take to address the issue of delays in our court, as well as increase or improve the issue of inefficiency? So that that issue or that maxim that judiciary is the last hope of common man, and also the issue of that justice delayed is justice denied, that Nigerians will be able to get justice at the appropriate time, not the issue of long delays as was expressed in the court. I rest my case. Thank you. And also, not just to congratulate you, but to adopt and possibly second what has been said from the first speaker, our Deputy Senate President looking from your resume. Mine is a very simple question, and it is more like a summary of all what has been asked you, I mean, asked by I mean, of you today here, is how can you, I want to emphasize that word, access to justice. In your own opinion, you've been practicing for so many years now. There are certain areas you believe needs to be improved upon. There are certain things even those of us from the parliament here can also do to improve on you doing your job better in guaranteeing or improving the access to justice. Thank you very much. Distinguished senators, our guests, heavily led by the incoming CJN. So I speak on the side of first, as a deputy, I represent the good people of Plateau, Plateau South and the deputy chairman committee on judiciary. I'm also speaking as a former governor. I know why I'm saying this. Mr. President, uh, my question to the CGM. When you talk about autonomy, when you talk about independence, you are also talking about autonomy. I happen to be, to chair the committee 
that on the side of governors that was fighting for the issue of autonomy and independence for the judiciary. We took the steps and we got up to Supreme Court on one aspect. My, my concern was that aspect that was rejected by the Supreme Court, and that has to do with the capital component. In other words, we were saying that they should, when you are taking charge of autonomy, you want to be autonomous. You must also be autonomous in all aspects, including capital projects. But surprisingly, we took the matter up to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court rejected it, rejected autonomy. I say this because when we are talking about my interpretation, not as a lawyer, as a politician, is that when you are talking of autonomy, independence, you must carry everything. It must all be inclusive and also bear the consequences. My, and so I'm asking my Lord, do you still stand by that or there is need for reconsideration? Because capital infrastructure is very, very important. It's very, very important if you want to be independent. That has gone, and I'm sure her Lordship was on that panel, if not presided over that panel. So you are now the CJM, and I have concern about this capital infrastructure, because without it, there is no independence. There is, there is no independence, and so you cannot be absolutely be said to, be, to say that you can walk without influence from outside. Thank you. That is my Justice of Nigeria, my question is just straightforward. With your experience and the resume we have seen, you are fully qualified for this office. And Nigeria will need you. And part of that is that we have been having issues between states and federal government or between the three tiers of government. Now that we are working on reviewing the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is it possible to think of having a constitutional court that will be handling these issues? And also issues related to electoral matters. And lastly, we have a lot of issues on terrorism in this country. So many times there have been arrests, but hardly we have seen such a huge number of arrests going vis-a-vis -vis with adjudication. So I want to know if it is possible for us to have special courts that will also handle cases of terrorism like is being done in other countries. Thank you, sir.